Hey guys, today we've got a very exciting video for you. This is the 2024 Porsche 718 Cayman GTS 4.0. It's got the four liter flat six. Today we're driving one with the seven speed PDK. The last Cayman GTS 4.0 that we drove had the six speed manual. So we'll make some comparisons in this video today. Let's talk about what this car is like inside and out. We'll walk you around it briefly. It is kind of raining and miserable outside. We are in Alabama driving some fun back roads. Traveled all the way out here to do the Porsche Experience Center and review this Cayman GTS for you guys. So let's get started. I've got a pretty cool spec. Graphite blue leather interior with GT silver exterior. Starting price on the Cayman GTS with a PDK is just shy of $98,000. So we're getting up there. These are expensive cars these days. You got to pay to play, but boy, does the interior deliver on quality. This feels as nice as any Porsche in the lineup. You're really getting a quality product here. This as tested is a little over $112,000. We've got some cool options. This is a very nice spec. We'll put all the info in the description so you guys can peruse through that. But let's get some basics out of the way. We have a four liter flat six, naturally aspirated. 394 horsepower, 317 pound-feet of torque, 20 inch wheels, 265 35R20s in the back, and two 35 35R20s up front. Big fan of these silver wheels on silver paint. These wheels are kind of remind me of the old 991 GT3 wheels. They look really nice. Pilot Sport 4S tires on all four corners, valved exhaust. Really nice, clean design with the new 718 Cayman. GTS isn't overly showy, it's just a, it's a classy look. It's a nice car, drives awesome, as you would expect. Let's pop the frunk and the trunk and show you guys what cargo space looks like. There we go. Up front, I've got a couple bags in here already. Plenty of room for cargo, groceries, racing helmets, whatever you need. And in the back, same story. Lots of space in this came in. It's a pretty practical car. You could fit just about as many things as you would need for two people on a weekend getaway trip. All right, on the inside. This Cayman GTS has the 18-way adaptive sport seats. It's a $2,800 option. They're pretty comfortable, lots of adjustment. You can adjust down here, side bolsters, lumbar, uh, driving about 70 miles out here. They felt pretty comfortable, a little bit on the hard side, but we only have 700 miles on this car, so just kind of getting broken in. The highlight for me in this interior is this carbon fiber steering wheel. This is just stunning. It feels perfect in hand, just the right thickness. You've got your drive mode adjustments down here, Normal mode, sport, sport plus, and individual. Cruise controls right down here, paddle shifters behind the wheel, turn signals, wipers, all the good stuff, lights, and of course your uh, key on, your ignition to the left side, as is traditional with all Porsches. This interior is pretty well laid out ergonomically. We still see lots of physical controls and buttons, which I'm always a big fan of. Climate buttons, all the, all the buttons and, and switch gear in this have a nice, hard Porsche click to them. There's a kind of a strength to everything, which is uh, very satisfying when you get in and use this Porsche Cayman. First two buttons I always press when I get into this are the exhaust mode button and turn off the auto stop start. As you notice, the car just shut off. Exhaust sounds fantastic. Let's go listen to it some. Before we go for a drive, let's talk about the sponsor for this video, Lewis Jewelers. Lewis Jewelers is my go-to authorized dealer for all of my luxury watch purchases. I most recently went to them and upgraded my Omega Speedmaster to the new clasp, which is adjustable, which is really nice. This was always my grail watch. So this is the Hesalite 3861 Omega Speedmaster Professional. Always wanted one of these. Finally decided to take the plunge and buy one after my first son was born. And uh, it's been an amazing watch to live with and use. The thing I like about it the most is just the way it looks and the quality behind everything. It's, it's manual wind, so you have to wind it just about every day. Well, actually, you don't have to wind it. You get to wind it. It's kind of a pleasure to do so. Everything about it feels solid, feels precise. It's a precise mechanical instrument. And it's also simple and hasn't really changed in design in a long time either. The Speedmaster has always been a chronograph. It's a sporty looking watch, and even though it has worn on the moon about 12 times on the back. It has its roots 
initially in racing. And that's the thing that I like the most about this watch. So anyway, enjoy it on the wrist. In this video, you guys have seen it in many, many videos over the years. Uh, thanks to Lewis Jewelers for hooking me up with this new clasp a few weeks ago. I've actually really enjoyed living with it. it seems to be polished a little bit better. It's a little longer. It's a specific kit that you get for the Omega Speedmaster 3861. So uh, just a note, it's not just a one piece, it's a kind of a multiple piece. You have to get a couple of links, uh, the clasp itself, and a couple of the pieces. And uh, it's well worth it though, because it definitely improves the quality of this watch and the way it wears on my wrist. All right, let's get on with the drive and go see what this Cayman GTS 4.0 can do on the road. So I've already spent some time driving this on the way out here today. Did about 70 miles or so on the highway. Averaged 28 miles to the gallon, which is quite good. This is rated for 19 miles a gallon in the city, 24 on the highway. This has easily been exceeding it all day today. We'll go into sport mode, manual. new four liter has a bit more of a lower guttural tone to it. It's not as high pitched, but it still makes all the right noises in my opinion. It is the only way to get the Boxster Cayman with the flat six these days. The GT4 is being discontinued for the 2024 model year, unfortunately. And the spider. This PDK is flawless. One of the best dual clutch gearboxes I've ever driven. I've always said I'd pick the manual in the Cayman Boxster and I'd go for the PDK in the 911, but. Honestly, you can't go wrong with either option. This PDK is so, so good in all of its variants and all of its different models across the Porsche lineup. This GTS achieves a really nice blend of GT car, sports coupe, and luxury item. It's very luxurious in here, surprisingly so. And of course, that really depends a lot on spec and options. But it feels really like a very high quality item. pretty tall gearing even with the seven speed PDK but it works I think it finally matches the power level from this car 394 horsepower is not something to snuff at in this small and this lightweight of a package we can't really play around with this too much in the rain today it's just a little bit hairy out but from my time that I've spent in this so far today it's just it's so nimble it's so lightweight and he has that kind of effervescent feeling around corners, but it's also very solid and very confidence inspiring at the same time. It truly is one of the great sports car chassis of our generation. And this only has a little bit more power than the 718 with the turbo four cylinder. But it has so much more character and personality with this flat six. This sounds like a Porsche should sound. And I 
think that's an important distinction and an important selling point of this GTS. When you're really getting into it, this exhaust I think sounds fantastic. I am missing a little bit of that higher register and the higher RPMs. It really howls from three to five grand. But right up to Redline, it doesn't quite give me that crazy, insane, exotic sound that we see maybe like a GT3 or something like that. When you're just cruising around regularly with the exhaust valve closed, you're on the highway, maybe you're just commuting in this, going to work. The exhaust can be a little bit droney at some revs, but for the most part, it's pretty livable, unless you're doing full long day drives in this car. We're on the smoothest road imaginable right now. There's a little bit of NVH and noise from the tires transmitted over rougher pavement. That's pretty typical with Pilot Sport 4S tires. The ride quality is excellent though. This is a hugely comfortable car to sit in and drive. The roads in Atlanta are pretty nice to be honest, but there are a few bumps here and there and this just soaks everything up beautifully. We do have a sport chassis mode, which we can select and zip things up a little bit, but honestly, this handles so well and so just solidly in its normal setting that it's kind of the per one perfect suspension mode. You can't take this out of the track. It's fully capable. It's got the cooling capacity. It's got the brakes. It's got the power and uh, all the Porsche engineering behind it. And without the Cayman GT4 anymore, this might be one of the best options in the Porsche lineup get for one for around $100,000, it's just the, kind of that perfect price point for someone who wants to get into the Porsche brand, Porsche lineup, or maybe just kind of graduate to that next level of performance. This Cayman GTS or the Boxster are both really two great options that kind of take you into that next echelon of quality, performance, and also brand image too. There's something to be said about that. This is a Porsche and people are going to know it. Let's go into Sport Plus, Let's see if that sharpens things up a little bit. Immediately I'm noticing downshifts are a little bit crispier. Yeah, that really wakes up the PDK. Suspension goes into a stiffer mode. There's a little bit more immediacy from the car and its character. Brakes. Good feel, consistent, linear, throttle tuning, same story. A nice weight to everything. I think we don't appreciate control weights as much as we should in cars these days, and this came and gets them all right. Nothing is too light, too flimsy feeling. There maybe isn't the most feedback in the world, but the control weights are all perfect, and I think that's what's really important about how Porsche has tuned and calibrated this car. I love how there are no gimmicks here. There's no fake burbles and pops from the exhaust. It's just smooth, clean engine tone. It's a classy sports car. there's an extra layer of refinement here with the PDK gearbox. If you want that manual driving experience, if you want that involvement factor, you've got to get the six-speed manual. But I really, really like this PDK. You can't go wrong with either option. I've never had as much trouble choosing between one option or another in my mind as I have between Porsche manuals and Porsche PDKs. They're just both that good.
back in the normal chassis. It is a bit greasy out. And we have to respect these conditions. shift down into first around some of these tighter hairpins. No piped in noise, no fake engine sounds, just induction and exhaust and it's all just right over your, your right shoulder. pleasure to get back behind the wheel of a 718 Porsche Cayman GTS. If I had a hundred grand to spend on a sports car, this would still be at the top of my list. It's one of the greats. I think the only elephant in the room is that this driving experience, or at least very close to this driving experience, could have been had for a lot less money a generation ago with just the regular Cayman and, and Boxster. But now, the four liter, the flat six, is behind a six figure paywall. But that said, it's still one of the greatest sports cars. At the price point, you can still go out and buy a used or certified pre-owned 981 Cayman or Boxster and have a great time with it. Porsche does have a fantastic CPO program. But of course, if you want the latest and greatest with this four liter and the extra torque and power that comes with it, this is what you have to go with. And I've got to say, it scratches the edge. Just a little dopamine machine. These tires also, oh gosh. Yes, I've always complained that Pilot Sport 4S's are noisy and a little bit overrated, but in the wet, in the rain, on a day like today, I wouldn't want to be driving on anything else. to quickly insert some highway cruising footage here. We are in normal mode. Exhaust valve is closed. We're just in drive. We're gonna merge here and talk about what this is like to drive on the highway. Big pump back there. Suspension soaked it up beautifully. So road noise at speed really depends on what type of pavement you're on and how rough it is. Wind noise seems to kind of blend in with everything else. I don't really hear a lot of wind noise. Mostly tires, very little vibration at speed. Car is very smooth to drive. These seats are pretty comfortable. Honestly, it's not a very fatiguing sports car to drive.
unless if you're on really rough roads and there's a lot of road noise. And most of that is just from these Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. Cruise control is pretty easy to operate once you kind of get the hang of it. It is the opposite of the Audi cruise control stock. So you can engage, set your speed, increase your speed by pushing forward, decrease by pulling back, down is off, up is resume. You can hold for five mile an hour changes. It's a pretty good system. No adaptive cruise control. There is a general lack of storage space in here. They've got these pockets to the side, but they're relatively small. Pretty much would only be able to put my phone in there. Your cup holders are the same story we've had for ages. Not very big. So you're gonna have to kind of make your drink selections based on the available interior space, which isn't much. You can maybe wedge some things behind the seats. Most of the storage is up front and in the back. Fuel economy and range are pretty impressive. I was seeing over 400 miles of range estimated at around maybe three quarters of a tank. This GTS also has the upgraded Bose sound system, which is a $990 option. I think it's well worth it. It sounds great. Uh, we've already done a sound system test in our previous Cayman GTS video, so go check that out if you want to hear it, if you want to listen to it. We've actually got a few more test tracks that I was using back then, so uh, you get a little bit better of an idea of what the sound system is like. And I would definitely spend the extra money to get it and spec it with my Porsche Cayman or Boxster. You've got to love the passing power and the torque with this new 4 liter. I think that's really the big win here is the torque. You don't have to rev this thing out anymore to really get good power out of it. It's just available at pretty low RPMs. 3,000 RPM, it starts to pull. Four grand, and you're off. You can even hear the induction noise start to kick in as it kind of comes on cam. But 70, 80 miles an hour, you're cruising in this on the highway at about eh, 2200, 2300 RPM, which is pretty good. We've got a bunch of different gauge options on the digital pod to the right. You can see our tire pressures, chrono, G force meter, engine performance, engine temperatures, audio, map, and navigation info. Pretty good visibility too, especially over my left shoulder. We've got a slightly wider angle mirror on the passenger side and that helps with our blind spots as well as having blind spot monitoring. You could daily drive this if you wanted to. Chances are it's not your only car, but uh, on a long road trip, if you're gonna drive this to a destination, you're gonna take it a few hours away to the racetrack, it's a pleasant car to spend time in. As far as tech goes, it has CarPlay, it has Android Auto, it has a good sound system. That's all I want out of my sports car. I don't want anything more, and I don't really want anything less out of a car in 2024. This gets it just about right. No gimmicks, no BS, just a good driving experience. Well, hopefully you guys will forgive me for not wanting to get out of the car again. We'll wrap this video up on the go, on the move. I have to get back to the Porsche Experience Center in Atlanta. And uh, I'm actually meeting up with Tedward. He's gonna be joining me on this trip, which is a, a hugely pleasant surprise. Had no idea he was even coming until I saw the invite list. And uh, it's me and him tomorrow. So anyway, stay tuned for those videos. Big thanks and shout out to Lewis Jewelers for sponsoring this video. Go check them out at lewisjewelers.com. I'll throw a link in the description. If you're interested in buying a watch from them, they carry some of my favorite luxury watch brands, Omega, Grand Seiko, Tag Heuer, Tudor, Breitling. Talk to DK, he'll set you guys up and provide a fantastic buying experience for you guys. They are an authorized dealer, so you get to maintain manufacturer warranties, and uh, they're just a great company to deal with. Anyway, we'll end on that note. Thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna go enjoy this. Cayman GTS 4.0, a little bit more on some of these back roads, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.